Hi, my name is Cleo Bennett, and if you haven't watched the first video in this series, I've been homeschooled while sailing around the world on a boat with my family for the past four years. If I teach you anything, please let it be this, how to use your Google Calendar. Now, you might be thinking, but Cleo, I already know how to use Calendar. And that might be true, but one of the simplest and most effective hacks I've learned for homeschooling is making your calendar your everyday tool. Here's your calendar, right? If you're like me, it'll look something like a rainbow with all its different blocks. In my previous video, I talked about time blocking. I use my calendar a little like a time blocked sheet of paper. You can see I have half an hour of time blocked out simply for organization every morning from 7 to 7.30. This is a personal choice because I tend to need time every morning to ease myself into the school day. Whether I'm journaling, making a list, reading, or making a coffee, I always use this time to wake myself up and find my focus. But this is just the surface layer of what your calendar can be used for. You can see down at 3 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays is a different looking block called Cleo plus Kirby. This is a calculus class with my sister and teacher, Kyle Kirby. Clicking on it makes a little window open up. Up top, you can see the time, the day, and how long the event is set to last too. For example, this meeting happens weekly on Mondays and Wednesdays from 3 to 3.30 p.m. until April 20th. Then, I have a Google Classroom meeting link, which if I click on, will take me straight to my class with Kyle. Now, Kyle was the one to create this event, so I don't have much control over it. I can simply join the link or move it around on my calendar. But I'll give you an example of how you can do something like this for your very own Cicero classes. Click anywhere on your calendar. This will choose a time. You'll see a little window pop up just like before. You're welcome to edit your event from here. However, I like to click on more options to see everything more clearly. First, name your event. Then choose what day will happen and what time. For me, this little button right here is very important. You see mine is set to Central Africa time because I'm in Cape Town. But if I move, I can simply change it. Click on the small arrow and a list of different time zones pop up. Then you can choose whatever time zone you wish. Now, click Add Google Meet Video Conferencing. If you wish to use Zoom instead of Google, you can simply click on the little arrow beside the Google Meeting button and add a Zoom link instead. Clicking on Does Not Repeat can give you the option to have your event as recurring or one time. There are a bunch of different options and then a custom button down there at the bottom. Over to the right, you can add as many guests as you want, depending who you want to have access to your event. You can also change whether your calendar gives you notifications. Although this might seem unnecessary and can get annoying, I do highly recommend using the reminder option. There will always be that one time you completely forget you have a class. For me, that's most days. But since I have the Google Calendar app on my phone, I can get a notification 30 minutes before, 15 minutes before, and 10 minutes before, so I never miss a class. That's about it for creating an event with Google Classroom or a Zoom meeting link, but feel free to experiment with all the different calendar tools. They can be very helpful. Homeschooling is all about strategy, and I hope this helped with yours. Thank you for watching.